Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Timo Kitchen. I'm with uh, Jacobs Electric. Our presentation is called Off the Shelf Static Excitation System, a cost effective alternative for hybrid generation plants. Uh, I'm going to give you the overview of the presentation. I'm going to talk about uh, I'm going to do the introduction, problem statement, the system requirements, and then my partner here is going to talk about the engineering development. Design revision and the future work of uh, in design. So, as uh, more and more hybrid generators are being uh, rebuilt and more modern equipment is being developed, they're still around, or at least in our area, which is North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, a lot of uh, hybrid generators with uh, static, with, I'm sorry, with rotating. Excitation systems part of the excitation course. And uh, this, which is, this is the case uh, that Planet we worked on or had the opportunity to work on this project, which is Holiday Bridge uh, Dam in South Carolina. They have uh, four one megawatts generators that at one point they were running off an empty set. Uh, two of them. Two of those generators uh, already have a static excitation system. And then uh, this company uh, approached us to do maintenance on the empty set. And due to the limited time in the outage, we went on site, uh, turned and undercut the commutator, put the brushes <coughs> in, changed the bearings, cleaned the stators, which we could do on site in that period of time and then put the unit back in service. That was back in 2017. And then a year later, uh, they call us to come back on site and do the same thing. But this is what we found after a year. So this is closely to the end of the commutator life. And we told the customer, uh, what we could do is uh, take the empty set out, take two shop, do the same thing on the, on the AC motor. This was a 2300 volt motor coupled to a 55 kilowatt generator, DC generator to feed uh, the, the, to, to excite the, the generator. <coughs> and uh, but this time, instead of doing all the predictive maintenance on the on the generator, this time we had to be remount the armature, and that takes time. To install a new com, send the armature to be rewound, balanced, uh, put back in service, and, uh, and of course, this small plant stayed on, stayed on, they could not be stopped for that period of time. <coughs> so, we then uh, given a, a proposal to do some static exciters, and uh, we got two quotes uh, on two OEMs. Uh, just to find out that uh, it's too expensive for a small hydro to have, <laughs> to have these systems. And uh, they were, on, well, their budget was around, I think, uh, 80000 And those quotes were above that, above that amount. So they came to us and said, well, what, what you can do? And we told them, what we can uh, design, <laughs> we'll try to design a static excitation system with what we call off-the-shelf components. Try to find a DC starter, try to find a power adapter controller, uh, protection relays, put it together in a box, and it, it can also try to find something that is reliable in the market that's not going to go away in five years and they, they don't do that unit anymore. <laughs> so that's our proposal to them. And they say, well, okay, go ahead. This is going to be like a beta system. Uh, we'll let you design it, try it out on our plant, and if it works, uh, uh, you can uh, do more for for us. And uh, so this is the uh, the one line diagram from the plant. This is the the existing, not existing anymore, empty set that at one point uh, was feeding all four of those generators. Uh, units uh, T-Code 4, 
when, when, we, when, when the higher ups, they already had the static state picture systems uh, on their planet. And this is the other two we decided and, and, and implemented for them and put them on the planet. Uh, again, this is the uh, old campus that you can see here. It's not there anymore. And another uh, thing that we had to try at the plant was to try to use all the existing things there, CTs, PPs, everything, so it would be under the budget. And then my partner here is going to talk about the engineering development and the rest of the presentation. Uh, good morning. My name is Humberto, and I'm going to continue with the, with the presentation. So, my partner already mentioned the uh, one of the critical aspects of this project, which was using the existing mirroring, existing PTs, existing CTs. Uh, mainly because the quotes that we got from other, from OEMs, they, they wanted to use their own metering system. So, of course, increasing the cost for, for this customer. Uh, this one right here, actually it's our, it's our system, how it turned out at the end. Uh, you can see here a uh, PC drive, our protection relays, some meters, some push buttons and LEDs for education, a disconnect switch, and of course our power factor control. So, first of all, we, when we were revising the characteristics and the requirements for the system, okay, first of all, we needed a, a step down transformer from 2400 to 230. At first, we were going to use one transformer for the two systems since it was using the MP set. Uh, it was using a, a one MP set for both generators, but we decided it wasn't viable to use. So we decided to put two, tra uh, two transformers there. Then uh, 125 EDC. 110 amps DC drive. So it was going to be acting as our, as our ABR on our voltage regulator. Of course, isolate the, the cabinet for maintenance purposes or repair purposes. And then here, right here, the main concern of the customer was that it should have the, the system needs to be as easy as possible. That's why we decided to go with a push button interface instead of something fancier. But uh, of course the power factor controller to control the drive directly and our protection relays to cut off the drives. The design revision at, at the end we added this little remote box. The static excitation system has the capability of doing auto synchronization with the bus, but for customer requirement, they wanted to use their old, old their old synchronizer. Like I said, they wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So we just ran a, a, a remote box wires that that, that wires uh, directly into into the cabinet for our customer to control <laughs> and see the see the, the, the actual synchronizer. The control panel is on the second floor, the static excitation systems are on the, on the first floor. So, one of the main uh, transformers uh, redesign or revision that we did was to take out the transformers out of the cabinet. Like I said, we, we try to make it as simple and safe as possible. So, we, we didn't want to have uh, 2400 volts inside the cabinet, so it's easier to work with 230 and it's easier to cut the power to 230. Then that's why instead of uh, disconnecting at 2300 or 2400, we disconnect at 230, which it makes it drops the, the cost of the, of the unit as well. You don't need any vacuum contactors or breakers to do that. Then instead of uh, adding a PLC, we just acquire an EC drive with programming capabilities and, and, and IOs, uh, different analog outputs, digital outputs, and so forth. 
like I mentioned before, a remote uh, analog control box. Uh, we added meterings, uh, very simple analog meterings on the on the outside of the cabinet, and this came out to be from two weeks uh, to, to two weeks of installation and commissioning. That's how it that turned out to be. I'm not sure if it's, it's easy to see, but this is mainly how our unit our unit operates using the, the existing the existing uh, metering circuits. Our future work. So here, right here, you can actually see the two different uh, static excitation systems that has also with the with the generators on the left on the background. So, what's in our plans for for these units? First of all, adding an HMI controller display for the for the generator information, and also use a more standard EC drive. So. I don't want to call it a dumber version, but that's what it is, without any programming or, or uh, I.O. capabilities, just, just working as a, as a standard ABR. And instead of that, we're going to use a PLC to it. The reason why we're adding a PLC is two main reasons. One, it, it, uh, it cuts the, the cost of the unit, first of all. Second, you can actually remove the power factor controller and, and take care of all your metering inside the PLC. Plus, also you have uh, you, you can add more capabilities to the to the unit, which you can do mechanical control, the blades or gates. Uh, of course, add more sensors to it: vibration, temperature, water level monitoring, and of course, you can use your auto synchronization. And of course, it adds this capability right here, which is remote and <coughs> control and monitoring. So that's in our, on our version two of one point two new new call of our system. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Captain.